All right, so I feel pretty good. Now, normally I would hit save here. I almost have this instinctive, you know, go up and hit save. Cool thing about Flow is when you hit run, it's going to automatically save your studies with you. Uh, that way, if this anything happens to the solver or to the computer while it's solving, uh, it's not going to lose your setup up to that point. Um, so, because here's the thing, the, the results can actually be used even if you have a partial solve. Uh, we're not going to mess with any of the results in here. I just want to make sure that it does create a new mesh and solve. Let's hit run, and we'll take a look at the solver window. There's a lot of information you can get from the solve. Solves can actually take a really long time. I have had legitimate solutions that took over a week uh, on a high-powered computer to complete, uh, but they were absolutely cool and gorgeous. You don't want to find out a week later that you have a problem. So here's a few things I always look at when I get to the solver window. The cells, there should be a reasonable number of cells. We did a little bit of optimization of the mesh earlier, so we feel pretty good. But, you know, if this is like 20 million cells, uh, you're potentially in for a problem. Uh, you can look at how long it's been running. Uh, you can look at uh, CPU time left. That's just a calculation estimate, so it could change wildly. Uh, we got some warnings down here. This is probably the most common warning you'll ever see. A vortex crosses the pressure opening. Uh, imagine you have a large vortex that gets created in your volume. Uh, maybe you have a large garage door open and you have a vortex where the hot and cold air are coming in and you get this vortex effect through the garage door right at the garage door. Well, if that's where your boundary is, then that circulation around the garage door is only being half resolved. The other half of the vortex, which is kind of a self-sustaining, self-feeding phenomenon, is not understood. So a vortex crossing the pressure opening when you have a bunch of free air convection with large doors and, and, and open walls, that's a problem. Or in an external study, that's a problem. But in this case, we have thin slots. Vortices in those thin slots are not important. All that means is you got a wide slot, some air's coming in one side, some air's going out the other side, and that's indication that there could be a problem. There's not here, that's safely uh, to be ignored for this. I can go ahead and look at a goals plot just to get an idea of what the values are trending towards, which is nice. Uh, again, those goals do give you some measurements you can look at. Probably my most favorite thing to look at though is a preview plot. So for this, I'm gonna do a temperature preview plot Click OK, and I get this nice plot. A uh, couple things, if your study is really, really like narrow or long or something like that, and you don't get enough detail, you can go into the properties and you can change this, like the image size, you can change it to a larger size, you can make it user-defined, uh, you can flip it if you need to. So that's a much larger uh, image, so I can kind of zoom in. It looks like I'm seeing the flanges, the mounting flanges on the back plate, not necessarily the, um, you know, what I would call the, the, the area of interest. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this guy, move it to the left. We'll put SolidWorks on the right. And when I come in here and I modify the properties of this plot, notice that you choose a plane to go from. If you have a plane somewhere that's perfectly positioned, go grab it. But if you want to do an offset, you come in here and do this offset value, plane offset. Come in here and look. There's this light sort of olive color. And I can move that offset visually. That's about where I want it. And I hit apply. And now I get a, a much different result in my preview. So this preview is is all we're really looking to understand is, are we really, really off base? Are we going somewhere that this is gonna be bad? Are we, you know, cruising for a week-long solve that we expected to be 10 minutes? And right now it's looking like we're doing pretty good. In fact, the goals are starting to converge and it just suddenly snaps to the end of the result and says, yeah, yeah, well, you're done. And what that generally tells me is that had I not given it valid goals, it would have looked for its own finish criteria. It would have said, well, let me go until I just feel like everything's good. And it would have solved for a much longer time. So goals 
are meant to either slow things down for complex phenomenon like cavitation, for example, or they're meant to speed things up if you have a relatively simple thing and you want it to focus on that value, that parameter, for the purposes of accuracy. Now, if I wanted to, I can hit stop anytime I want. I can stop and say save the results, and it's just like it was actually solved completely. So if you're halfway through and you're like, man, I kind of want to see what's going on now, hit pause. Well, don't hit pause, hit stop, and it'll create a, a file, a result file for you. You can fully post-process it, and then you can just say, yeah, things are looking really good. Hit run, and then continue the solution, right? with maybe new goals, new parameters, new calculation control options, which we'll talk about in a second, and then you can continue it on later. 